Welcome to Apostolic Archive. We have gathered many wonderful sermons through the years and we have decided to share them with the world. We hope you enjoy. Please subscribe to our channel. Please like the video and comment with something you take away from this message. Also, hit the bell below so you can receive an update as soon as we upload new content. Blessings. And uh, I thought his sister Hill made a comment a while ago about walking with the Lord and being on the path. It kind of confirmed to me and that the Lord, hopefully, I'm following his leadership here tonight and what he'd have us to say. I'm reading from Exodus chapter 23, verse 20, and uh, this is the word of the Lord as he is speaking here through uh, to Moses, and he's giving him some instructions. Matter of fact, if you start in Exodus, I think it's about Exodus 19, and you go all the way through to about Exodus 31, you'll find that it's just one law, one principle right after the other. It includes the visit to Mount Sinai, includes all the instructions concerning the tabernacle. And of course, what we talk about as being the Ten Commandments. It's a lot of good teaching, a lot of good principles. And, uh, but the Lord spoke to Moses, and he said, I want to tell you what I'm doing here. He said, I send an angel before thee. I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Notice verse 21. He talks about this angel. He said, beware of him. In other words, acknowledge the fact. Be aware of the fact that he's there. And obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice, and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies, and an adversary unto thine adversaries. For mine angel shall go before thee, and bring thee unto the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And he said, I'll cut them off. I want to talk to you for just a little bit on this subject. God has got a plan. Amen. I told Brother Peter when we came for talking the other night, and I said, boy, that'll preach now. Well, I don't know that I'm going to do much preaching, but I hope to share something with you and remind each and every one of us that God has a plan. And I might just, uh, as an addendum to that, I might just say that, and he's working his plan. He's got a plan, and he's working his plan. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word. Thank you for these wonderful people. God, you're building a church of wonderful families, and we are blessed to be a small part of it. I thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to share some things from your word. Now, anoint my mind and my lips that I might speak as you would have me to say. And everybody said, in Jesus' name, the Lord bless you. You may be seated. Throughout Exodus as I mentioned earlier, 19 through about 31, you'll find that God reveals three things primarily. He reveals a particular way of life. Also, He reveals a particular manner of worship having to do with the tabernacle and all the things required of the Levites. And also, He had descriptions concerning or requirements for the place that they would worship. Not only how they would worship, but the place that they would worship. You'll find that in these several chapters, 19 through verse 31. The thing that really stood out to me when I was reading here in Exodus was these words where the Lord spoke to Moses and said, I will send an angel before thee. Now, I want to just take a moment and remind each and every one of us, perhaps you've never looked at it in this respect, but this is a reflection. This book right here is not only the Word of God, but it also, in, a, in an abstract form, it's everything that God desires to develop in you and I. This is life right here. Amen. Every battle, every river, every mountain that is climbed is nothing more, amen, than a pattern of the things that you and I deal with in our lives. You will find always a message in this book that will parallel anything that you're dealing with. This is the most relevant book in the world. Amen. It's thousands of years old as far as the pages or the words that are written or spoken. 
We know it's the eternal word of God. But this book right here I hold in my hand is the most relevant book of Scripture, principle, truths, and instructions. It never is outdated. That's the beautiful thing about it. <laughs> Amen. It's been around for a long, long time, and it's still relevant. Can you say praise the Lord? Still relevant. Amen. The Bible says here when he spoke to Moses, he said, I'm going to send an angel. Now, when I was uh, growing up, every now and then, people would make reference to people having an angel. And I can see, as I study the Word of the Lord, that the Bible does speak of the fact that there were angels assigned to certain individuals. There were angels assigned to certain kings and prophets, and also uh, people that uh, were doing the will of God. God would dispatch an angel to go with them and to be with them. And in this particular case here, he talks about an angel that he has dispatched that is going to lead this million-plus people out of Egypt into the land of promise. He gives us a few things in describing this angel. He said, this angel is going to do some things. He said, he is going to go before you, number one. He will go before you. In other words, he will be someone that you'll want to follow. He's your guide. He said this, to keep thee in the way. He didn't say to ask you. He just said he'll keep you in the way. He'll keep you in the way and bring thee to the place which I have prepared. The Amplified Bible uh, translates this particular statement, keep thee in the way. He said, this angel will not only keep you, but he will guard you on the way. While you're on the way. Now, I believe, amen, that there's only one path that leads to the promises of God. I don't believe there's several paths to heaven. I don't believe there's several highways to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way. The way, not a way. <laughs> he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. So we understand that there is a way, the way, and that's the only way, amen, that leads to the promises of God. The writer here records the word of the Lord saying, this angel will keep thee in the way and will bring thee into the place which I have prepared. How will he do it? He will guard thee. The word here having to do with guard has to do with threats from the outside. Amen. In one translation, and he will keep you, which means threats from within, to guide and to show you the way. He will deal with threats from the outside, and he'll deal with threats from the inside. And in the process of doing all of that, he is showing you the way. He said, beware of him. In other words, take notice of him. Give respect to him. And he mentioned some things that I think are important about this particular angel. He said, number one, don't provoke him. Amen. In other words, don't provoke him. <laughs> don't do something to get him stirred up. He's got a job to do. He's on a mission. He's leading and he's guiding the people. I've given him the responsibility to guide and he said, I'm asking you not to provoke him. Amen. Do not provoke him. Not. He said, because this angel, he said, will not pardon you. Now, that, I read that and I thought, whoa, now that's something. He said, the angel that I've commissioned to oversee you and get you to where you need to go is not an angel that's going to compromise. He's not an angel that's going to vacillate. He's not going to change. He said, he's got a mission. And his mission is to keep you on the way. And if you're on the way, he said, he's going to take care of you. He's going to guard you from all the threats that are without, from all the threats that are within. And through the process of that, he is going to be your guide. And he said, he is someone that has my name in him, my name in him. I want to say to us uh, this afternoon, I think it's important that I remind each of us, that at the beginning of each and every project, or each and every uh, uh, voyage, or each and every uh, challenge that is before us, there will always be something that precedes it. If we are given instructions, amen, to accomplish what we've been commissioned to do, there is always a plan. There's always a road map. 
Amen. I'll tell you, I, uh, I'll make a confession here today. I really do like the GPS system. Now, you may not be that sold on it, but it has kept me out of more trouble. Amen. And uh, it's helped me not to waste a lot of time, Sister Dina. There's been times if I hadn't had that GPS, uh, it would have tried my patience. Amen. Because I have a tendency to look at a map, look at it good and hard, lay it down, look through the windshield, and forget everything I just looked at. Now, you may not have that problem, but I've had that problem. But there's something about that sweet voice on that GPS, and she just tells you, turn at the next light. Not this light, the next light. I like specific instructions. <laughs> I like to be very clear and specific. And that GPS, if you'll notice it, and it's even going to become more accurate than what it is, they say, when they get this 5G network going here. But, I mean, it works within feet of where you need to turn. And if you, pass, if you ever passed a turn that you were supposed to make, and it comes back on there, it says rerouting, rerouting. And you, they'll take you back through the neighborhood and have you making all these turns until you get right back where you were. Isn't that wonderful? I left out of a place the other day over in uh, uh, Fort Worth, went over there to eat at a chicken place. I'm trying to think of the name of it. Babes, where did they come up with that? When I think of a chicken, babe is not what I'm thinking of. Babe's chicken. But they've got uh, fried chicken. they got uh, chicken fried steak. Some of you guys had not had dinner yet. Your mouth will be watering. And they bring it out on the table in a, in a family fashion. And, I mean, it's good. If you're hungry, that's the place to go. Go to Babe's. But when I pulled out of there, I needed to get back over on by 3rd and 35 and get back down in Fort Worth and off on 820 Loop and all that stuff. And it's been years since I've been down through there. But before I, when I pulled out of my parking place, the first thing I did is I punched in Gladewater. Amen. And, brother, that little sweet voice came on and said, take a left here, take a right, take another left. I didn't know where I was at. I was just listening to the voice. Just listening to the voice. And you know what? It brought me right where I needed to go. Before I knew it, I was on the, on the interstate. I saw a sign. It said Dallas. Amen. I went to the right, and I knew I was on the right road. Amen. But if I hadn't had that voice, but that voice was directing me and leading me. Now, when you read the Old Testament, you'll find that the manifestation of the angel that God commissioned, amen, to lead Israel was manifested in different ways. One of those was it was manifested as a cloud above their head by day. It was manifested as a fire by night above their heads. <clears throat> the cloud gave shade, the fire gave warmth, uh, and the glory of the Lord would come down out of the cloud and fill the tabernacle when God would confirm, uh, amen, the fact that he was pleased with the sacrifice. But it was all something that had to do with guiding the people of the Lord. As long as they were on the right path. <clears throat> if they were on the path. Amen. The path. And I got to meditating on that this afternoon. And the Lord seemed to impress upon my heart and mind. Amen. If there ever was a time that we need to make sure that we're on the path. The path. Amen. I think we need strong convictions about being on the path. Praise the Lord. Because, folks, this guide that has been commissioned to lead us, he's not on another path. There's just one path, and that's the path he's on. Amen. And the Scripture said in my text here, he said, if you get on another path, he said the thing that's working for you now is going to be working against you. Because he said this angel... He doesn't change. He's been commissioned to lead my people to a place that I have prepared. So do everything to just stay on the path. Amen. Do everything to follow and step. Amen. With this angel that I have commissioned. In Colossians 3 and 17, the Bible said, Whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, and the Father by Him. Everything you do, you need to do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. I want you to know I want God's favor on everything I do. I said I want the favor of God. 
I want the favor of God on my life, upon my marriage, upon my church, upon my family, upon my children, upon my grandchildren. Amen. I thought this afternoon while I was praying, I got to thinking about my granddaughter, uh, Julianne. She's in, in high school down there in Fort Worth. She sent me a little something on Facebook or uh, texting, I guess it was, her mother did. Amen. And friend, I think the lowest grade she made was a 93 or 4. She made several hundreds and, amen, made a uh, hundred in Spanish, or I think it was, and made 93 or four in something else, made a hundred and, and, uh, or 98 in algebra. I thought, man, I need to go back and check her, her, uh, her gene, find out if she's really a McGuire or not. <laughs> but she's got a daddy that sure tries to keep her on the path. Amen. I give credit to uh, my... Uh, uh, to Sister McGuire for my granddaughter Madeline and getting through school. I'll never forget uh, a lot of times she would be back there in the bedroom and she stayed with us for several years and she'd go to our little old school and when she'd get home she'd have a lot of homework. Sister McGuire would go back in the bedroom and they'd sit on that bed and spend hours and I'd hear Madeline cry, I don't want to do it no more. I'm tired. I ain't going to do it. Yes, you are. We're, no, pick up that pencil. We're still going to work on it. Amen. And with God's help and her, and her, her uh, mom's help, she got through school. Amen. And she graduated with good grades. But it took somebody just keeping her on the path. Amen. She knew as long as she stayed on the path, that was some of the best help she could get. But if she got off the path, that was going to be her worst critic. Amen. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. And the reason we're trying to stay on the path tonight, folks, is because there is a place that is prepared for us. A place that is prepared for us. Now, heaven is prepared for us. But I also want to just sort of break this down and help you and I understand that there are some places we're going to go in the course of our lifetime. Amen. Where God has gone ahead of us. He has assigned an angel to lead and to guide us. And if we'll follow that angel, it's going to take us to a prepared place. And the place that is prepared is a very critical place because it's going to determine success or failure. It's going to de determine victory or defeat. <clears throat> Amen. When you read in the Bible and you go to the book of, uh, of uh, I think it's in the book of Joshua. I'm going to just kind of go over there real quick and read this particular verse. Amen. In Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 through 15, <clears throat> after Israel had followed the cloud and the fire, remember the Lord said, I've commissioned an angel. And it said that they came to the Jordan River and they were crossing over the Jordan River to go into the land and they're fixing to go there to stay this time. This trip, they're going to stay. The first one, they were unbelievers, they went back. But this is 40 years later after the first 40 years. This is now 80 years of travel for Joshua and Caleb. And Joshua comes across that river. He's leading men behind him, the elders of Israel. And it said he come to Jericho. This is their first conquest. <clears throat> And he lifted up his eyes, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua walked up to that man, and he went unto him and said, Are you with us, or are you with them? He was pointing to Jericho. Are you with us, or are you with those people behind the wall? Listen to what this man said. He said, I'm not with you, and I'm not with them. I imagine that kind of got old, old Joshua kind of wonder scratching his head. How's that work out? He said, no, but I'm the captain of the host of the Lord. Am I now come? And Joshua realized who he was talking to. That was that angel that God commissioned to lead his people into a land of promise. And he said, he's going to guide you and he's going to keep you. But he said, I want you to know, understand, he don't play favorites. Because he's not working for you, he's working for me, God said. So don't you try to provoke him in any way. He's working for me. Amen. I remember one time some people asked Abraham Lincoln during the war. They said, Mr. President, they said, you know, we're fighting the South, and, and they believe in God. We're, we're the North, and we believe in God. He said, whose side do you think God's on? He said, sir, I don't think it's important about whose side God's on. I think it's who's on God's side. He said, you better pray that we're on God's side. <laughs> Amen. Not that God's on our side. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
And so when they got to Jericho, they saw this man standing there, and they said, whose side are you on? He said, well, I'm not on your side, and I'm not on their side. Amen. He said, I'm, I'm on his side. Praise the Lord. And the Scripture says that when Joshua realized that, Amen. That man standing with the sword, who was the captain of the host of the Lord, he told Joshua, you better take your shoes off. He said, you're on holy ground. Praise God, you're on holy ground. I would say to somebody in this building here this afternoon, you've been journeying, you've been traveling for a long time. Amen. Trusting God to lead and to guide you to a particular important place in your quest to overcome and to be victorious and to be all that you can be for God. And you have the promise that God has gone before you and he sent an angel before you. Amen. I want to say to you, when you come to that time of test and conquest, and it looks as though it's nothing but high walls, so high you can't crawl over them. As the old song says, so deep you can't go under and so wide you can't go around it. It looks like it's impossible. May I say to you, as this one angel spoke to Joshua, you're on holy ground. Somebody said, I thought this was a battlefield. This is where you're going to have your first victory in the land of promise. It's called Jericho, but you see these big old walls? They're going to be falling. You see these walls? They're coming down. Joshua, you may not understand it, son, but you're standing on holy ground. This is a prepared place. I want to say to somebody in the Holy Ghost tonight, praise God. Amen. There's something out there. I don't know if it's a disease. I don't know if it's an injury. I don't know if it's a family problem. I don't know if it's your children that you're dealing with. And it's a thing that's so mammoth and so insurmountable. Amen. And you've come right to the threshold of it. And the enemy would like to think that you're standing all by yourself. But I want you to know before you got there, God had an angel going before you. And that angel is standing there with his sword drawn. Amen. And he's saying, I'm on the Lord's side. Praise God. And this is holy ground. This is holy ground where you're standing. It may not look like it now, but these walls are going to fall flat. It may not look like it now, but this will be your first victory in the land of promise. And you may not have realized it when you started, but God had a plan. You're going to look back over your shoulder in years to come, and you're going to see how all the pieces just came together. I like one word that was stated by one of the early writers. He said, my God has his way in the whirlwind. He said he makes a path right through the whirlwind. Amen. In the middle of chaos, in the middle of everything looking like it's falling apart, he said God makes a path even in the whirlwind. God will make a path and he'll go before you because he has prepared a place. And when you get there, it will look intimidating. But he said, this is not a place where you're going to be defeated. This is a place where you're going to build a tabernacle of worship and you're going to glorify God. This is a holy place. This is a holy place. I thought to myself as one of our dear brother John came to me last night for prayer and sent me a text a while ago, and Brother John, we're praying for you, and we have in the prayer room already, and will again, but I thought as he came to me, and he's dealing with a lot of pain and suffering right now, amen, but I want to tell you, Brother John Watson, uh, this is not a place, amen, where you're defeated, this is a place that is holy unto the Lord, uh, and in that place, God's already prepared some things uh, to let you know it's a place of worship, and it's a place that's going to glorify God, God's going to take care of Jericho. God's going to take care of Jericho. How many archers are we going to need? How many swordsmen? How many spearmen? He said, you're not going to need any of that. Amen. Have you got some worshipers? Have you got some praisers? Amen. I want to tell you, I've already got the service lined out, God said. I just want you to march around this city one time. He said, until you get to the seventh day. And at the seventh day, I just want you to march around it seven times. I want your musicians to blow their trumpets. And I want everybody else just to shout hallelujah. Praise. Praise God, because this is a holy place. Uh, somebody said, no, this is Jericho. Uh, they can ride chariots three abreast around the top of this wall. Uh, it's intimidating. Nobody's been able to get past those walls. Uh, amen. There's no wall that's so big and so wide uh, that my God cannot get through it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is a holy place. Uh, amen. God has a plan. Uh, and I'm telling you, folks, he's going to work his plan. 
I said, he's going to work his plan. Let's clap our hands unto the Lord if you believe that. One of the things I've found out, anytime you begin a project of any kind, especially building a house, building this building here, you go back into the storeroom there at the offices next to Sister Fife's office. She's got a room there, and right off to the side of it, there's a big bundle of paperwork with rubber bands around them. And it has all this building drawn out. It has the closets. It has the rooms. It has the pool. It has everything. It's called abstract. That's what it's called. It's called abstracts. And if you go somewhere that someone has a degree in mechanical engineering, uh, they will draw the plans for a building. And uh, that's the building. you got to have that to initiate the loans and the support that you need to begin that project. Somebody's got to take what's between your ears and they got to put it on a piece of paper. Amen. They got to put it on a piece of paper. And then the next step from the paper, it steps into the world of reality. It becomes a tangible thing. First, it begins with the thought and then becomes the written word. And then after that, it becomes something tangible that you can touch. But it begins with an abstract. That's where it begins. Amen. With an abstract. Praise God. I want you to know God's one of the best mechanical engineers there is anywhere. And and I tell you, he can draw up a set of plans, and you may not understand it, but I want you to know God knows exactly what he's doing. Now, Brother Fife over here, he can read the building plans. He and Brother Whitehead can read uh, the house prints. They can read that, and it's like reading a book to them. I look at it, and I turn it this way, that way, and look at different ways and trying to figure out where this and that is. And Amen, Brother Kirkendall. He knows what I'm talking about. He can do that. He can read the plans. I, I struggle with reading the plans, but they're abstract. Abstract just simply means it's something that's a product of the mind. It's in the mind. It's not necessarily a tangible reality, but that's where it's got to start. Amen. You know, the Bible said, as a man or a woman thinketh in their heart, so is he. You want to get on this path? You want to get on this path? Amen. This path that has the blessings and the authority and the anointing of God on it. You've got to get your mind, amen, in the right place. Amen. You've got to get your mind in the right place. Because the devil knows this, my friend, is the arena of contest right here. And if he can dominate this mind, he knows that there's a lot of things God wants to do through us that will never become a tangible reality if he can sow confusion right here in this mind. But my God is not the author of confusion. Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Oh, praise God. Thank God for the truth of his word. Thank God for people that will get up and preach the word and teach the word, and they'll testify and declare the goodness of God and what it is when you stay on the path and you follow the angel and the spiritual influence that God has placed in your life. And you may not understand every step that you take, and you don't even know what room you're in. You don't even know where the bathrooms are in the living room. You just see a bunch of blue markings on a piece of paper. But you put it in the hands of God. And it won't be long until it'll start coming out of the ground. It'll start start taking on a form. Praise God. Amen. When we step out by faith and start following God on this path, He leads us. He protects us. He provides for us. Amen. He defends us as long as we stay on The path, not a path, not some path, but the path. Praise the Lord. I want to tell you about the path I'm on. The writer said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth, first to the Jew and also to the Greek. Somebody asked Paul one time about that path. He said, if I come preaching any other gospel, even than that which I preached unto you, he said, I pray that I would be accursed. That's what he was saying. Let him or myself or anybody else be accursed if they're not on the path. Somebody said, what was the path that Paul preached? Amen, I'll tell you about the path that Paul preached. He said, unto what then were you baptized? They said, unto John's baptism. He said, well, John verily baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying unto them that they should believe on him that would come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. Now when they heard this, they were all baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Paul laid his hands upon them. The Holy Ghost came upon them. They spake with tongues and the prophesied, and the number of them was about twelve. 
That's the path. You'll find that in Acts chapter 19. Paul said if anybody comes preaching anything else, it's not the path. It's not the truth. Amen. I'm telling you, folks, the truth will not waver. The truth will declare, amen, a path. Not many paths, but a path. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's a lot of things in Scripture that come across as abstracts. It's hard to understand, hard to wrap your brain around it. But if you'll just stay on the path, it'll materialize. It'll come about. It will. You go out to a building site, you see two-by-fours, all different types and sizes. You see insulation stack, brick stack. But the Whitehead's doing a house over here for my sister. And every now and then I'll drive by there, and, and I can tell. It's made changes over the last couple of months dramatic changes and uh, the plumbing is in there roughed in and there's the walls and different things and I think they were setting forms for a garage today to pour the slab for the garage and I went out there but all of that was abstract a lot of times I'd go out there and I thought well, what are they going to do with that come back three days later now I see where that fits I see how that works somebody said I've got a lot of questions when I get on the other side I do too But it's all going to fit. I don't understand a lot of stuff. Amen. I don't understand sometimes. I look back over the years and I see some that the Lord has seen fit to take from, from us and, and uh, take them to the other side. And I think, Lord, I don't know that I'd have done it that way. It seemed like their lives were so impactful upon this one or that one. And now they're gone. It seemed like things just sort of fell apart here, Lord. What, what are you doing? And it's really abstract to me. But on the other side, it's going to all come together. And I'm going to, I'm going to say it now because I believe I'm going to say it then, Brother Kirk and Dial. I'm going to say, Lord, you knew what you were doing. You knew what you were doing all along. My old flesh just got to feeling a little selfish, and I thought I could have done a better job. But, Lord, I'm so glad you're God. I'm so glad you're God, and I'm so glad you handle things. Because the abstract to me doesn't make a lot of sense. I look at it, and I think I know what I'm doing. But, Lord, this is not your first rodeo. <laughs> you know exactly what you're doing. Hallelujah. I remember one time I was coming into Dallas. And I, back in years gone by, I'd go to board meetings and fly in and out of Dallas quite a bit. And I always had a little game I was always playing when I'd come into the Dallas area. I always liked to look out the window and see if I could identify the streets and identify where I used to live or identify schools and I don't know, you may do that too, Brother Norvell. I look out the window and say, okay, that's so-and-so, and that's that. And, you know, and I, could, I was seeing it from up above, you know. One day I was coming in, and I thought, I'm going to play God. <laughs> so I was coming over uh, the highway there, Interstate, uh, I think it was Interstate uh, 30, right there close to the airport. And I w we were coming in that day from the south. And uh, as we were flying in, I, uh, I looked over to my left, and I could see where the interstate was going into Fort Worth. And there were red tail lights. it looked like, for miles. I looked over here to my right where the traffic was coming out of Irving, and I said, boy, look at them folks. They're just flying down the road. I know something they don't know. They can fly all along they want to, but they're fixing to slow down right over that hill. I see something they don't see because I'm up high, and they're down low. And my perception of life is different than theirs. And while I was playing that game, the Lord just sort of quickened it to me. He said, now, son, that's where I'm at. He said, I see the past, I see the present, and I see the future from where I'm sitting. And you can't see it. And you wonder why I'm doing some of the things that I'm doing. Right now, it's all just abstract to you. But someday, you're going to understand exactly why I did what I did. I had a plan. And I was determined to work my plan. Mm -mm. But the Harper, I don't understand why God does some things the way he did it. But I'm going to look at you and Sister Gail and tell you, you're in God's perfect God did it his way. And when you get on the other side, you're going to look at him and say, Lord, now I know. Now I understand. 
Now I understand why you did it the way you did it. You did it the right way. Thought of Brother Miller back here the other day last year. We almost lost him. And I would imagine Brother Miller's probably asked himself the question, Lord, why did I need to spend three months in a hospital hanging by a brittle thread? Well, Brother Miller, I don't know. And I don't think you know either. But I will say this. God has a plan. And he's working his plan. And if we'll just stay on the path, he's got an angel commissioned to take care of all the threats that are without and all the threats that are within and to guide us until we reach that prepared place. That prepared place. And when God prepares a place, he prepares a place where you are going to be faced with your greatest conquest. Brother Miller, there was an angel the Lord sent before you into that hospital. It might have been through the hands of a, of a literal man or a woman. I don't know. But God worked through that angel. Amen. And led you through the valley of the shadow of death. And I don't know why God chose that route. But someday on the other side, we're not just going to see bricks and mortar and sacks of cement scattered around. We're going to see the finished product. And we're going to walk around it and look at it. And we're going to say to ourselves, now I know. Now I understand what God was doing. This is what God was working on. Thank God. Aren't you glad that he's got a plan and he's working it? Let's give the Lord a hand of praise and thank him. Heavenly Father, we love you. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Let's stand together. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. I remember years ago, it was uh, on a Saturday night, my sister and one of the little girls from the church and a young man had uh, gone out to just ride around in the car a little bit and have some fun. And while they were out there riding on what they call Roller Coaster Hill, every town's got one, I guess, is out by the lake. All of a sudden, somebody came over the hill, and the headlights blinded them, and the gentleman that was driving the car swerved off and lost control, hit a tree, killed the little girl that was in our church, uh, and she died. So that's been 50, around 52 years ago. My sister, now my sister is a, I tell you, she's a delightful person. If you want to know anything, in the past, and she was in your life, she can tell you what dress you had on, how your hair was parted, and what song they were playing on the radio. I don't know how she does it, but she can remember all that. <laughs> your wife too, <laughs> all right. And uh, so the other day, she, uh, this young lady that died in that car wreck, her sister, Brother Story's wife, Jefferson, they had a baby girl, and they named it after her sister that had passed away. And uh, same name. Well, my sister, she said, you know, we were young kids. You don't know why anything like that happens. I remember our church was so grieved that Sunday morning. We couldn't have church. We all just came in and stood there and cried and went to the altar and wept. It, was, it just shook our little old church. My sister called the other day, and she called the, the girl who was the namesake of her friend. And she said uh, to her, she said, you know, your aunt that died when she was just a little girl, she had a little white purse in the car. I remember that white purse. She said, I wonder what happened to that white purse. And this young lady said, I have it. And it's white. She said, you do? Yes. She said, have you ever looked in it? She said, no. She said, 
do you think you'd want to? She said, you know, I never thought about it. But if you'd like to see it, we'll look at it. So 52 years, that purse had been closed since the day of that accident. She unlocked it and laid all the contents on a table and took a picture of it and sent it to my sister. And on those on that table lay the faces of young people that were in our church <laughs> when I was a big 18-year-old grown young man. Faces of young people in our church, faces of others. There was a little package of certs. There was some lip balm. There was a little penny. And I looked at all of that and I thought, man, 52 years. It's been inside there. 52 years, Lord, of not really understanding why some things happened the way they did. We're going to get on the other side and we're going to say, Lord, I've always wondered about this. You wouldn't happen to have something pertaining to this. Now, you can believe this if you want to or not, but heaven is not going to be limited in any way. Heaven knows no limitations. And I just got a feeling that when you get to heaven, there's not going to be any questions. He's just going to open the purse. He's going to lay it out there. And we're going to say, Lord, you had a plan. And you worked your plan. Oh, it's going to be worth it on the other side. We're going to take off our shoes and we're going to say, Lord, I feel like I'm on holy ground. Because everything's been settled. There's no questions now. It's okay. Everything's all right. What do you say? Let's spend eternity together. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, peace. I feel peace. And it's a wonder. Oh, coming down from my Father above. Oh, sweep over my spirit. Oh, forever I pray. Now what I want you to do in closing, I want you to turn loose and release whatever it is that you've worried and fretted about and wondered why it happened the way it did. I want you to lift your hands and release it and put it in the hands of God because He's got it taken care of. He's working a plan. He's got a plan and He's working it. We're right in step where with God wants us to be. Let's just stay on the church as a church. Let's stay on the path, church. Let's keep following in the path. It's going to be okay. Oh, hallelujah. Sweep over my spirit. Oh, forever I pray. Oh, in fathomless billow of the Heavenly Father, we thank you this afternoon for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for some of the most wonderful people in all the world that we would ever have the pleasure of ministering to. I pray, God, that this atmosphere of the Holy Ghost would be upon them. Go with them. Give them the assurance and the faith. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Everything's going to be all right. God's got a plan, and he's working that plan. And it's going to be okay. Lord, keep your hand upon us. I pray in Jesus' name, bless as we worship you at giving. Lay your hand upon Brother John Watson. Lay your hand upon Brother Tim Price. Lay your hand upon all of those that are traveling on the highways. 
Bring them back home safe, we pray. And everybody said, in Jesus' name, the Lord bless you. Greet someone in the name of the Lord. You're dismissed in the fear of God. Amen.